All right, my people, we to, we to Pro Max today in Biafra land as the indigenous people of Biafra. Yes, eh, as the Biafra Liberation Army has lost the member, the IPOV has lost the member in hot, fresh attack. Yes, eh, the Prime Minister eh, Simon Eber has also blown hot, has also reacted to this with the uh, immediate effect. All right, my people, without further ado, we'll be going into the details of this news. Remember, we are your one and only Let's Talk TV. All right, uh, tension has uh, risen in Biafra land as another violent confrontation between the security forces, uh, the zoo terrorists, and the Biafra Liberation Army. The indigenous people of Biafra have uh, left uh, its one, uh, several, one dead and several injured. The incident uh, occurred in early hours uh, in the morning and has further heightened and already volatile situation in the region. The latest uh, clash uh, took place in the outskirts of uh, the Biafra land southeast where the, there was reportedly a meeting and there was an attack in that same joint by the rather by the joint tax force of the zoo military and the zoo army and the zoo police units and according to the eyewitnesses the forces ambushed a gathering and uh, this is where they were caught a waffle details still remain unclear it is confirmed that uh, one member has been confirmed dead Yes, killed while others are sustaining injury. The identity of the disease has not yet been released officially, but the death has sent shockwaves to the Biafran community, with uh, many accusing the government of launching a brutal crackdown on peaceful activists. Local pres residents uh, described the scene as a chaotic with gunfire erupting with Without the warning, the um, this one is coming from someone within the area. He said we heard gunshots and saw people running helter skelter, running in every direction. Everyone was scared, and uh, we had witnessed it from witnessed the attack from a distance. In response to the death, uh, the there has been a call for immediate like i said immediate retaliation condemning what they called the state-sponsored terrorism which is what they've been doing right from time it is not a new thing it is not a it is not something that is new one way or another it is something that has been clear right from time the tension has risen all over the place of course, the PM has come out in a fiery broadcast and they has blown hot, lashed out at the zoo authorities and vowed retribution over the death of the member. Eba has uh, gained, Eba, who has gained a full-time reputation for his hardline stance on the Biafra independence, condemned the zoo government for what uh, they did a cowardly and unprovoked attack on his people he has come out and has said that this particular black day will not be forgotten at any point in time uh, but has uh, declared in a live stream which uh, of course is being followed by thousands of his supporters and followers the blood of these fallen heroes will not be in vain the nigerian government must answer for their crimes we will continue to resist this occupation and we will not rest until Biafra is free. Eba's words uh, have further inflamed and caused more reaction. The zoo government has yet to officially make a statement on the latest clash, but sources within the military have defended the action. Of course, that is what they will see as a necessary response to the group. They consider a threat to national security. Well, my people, they consider these people a national threat to national security while there are others. Their own people causing more mayhem than you would 
ever think of in your entire life and they don't they've not seen it they've not looked at it as a as as national security calls <laughs> maybe we should just let you know how far these people are ready to go or how far these people are ready to take whatever it is whenever it comes to anything that looks like it's southeast or Ibo shows how backward they are and how far they would go to do anything for many decades dear friends both those who have agitated in the past dear friends for many of these agitators have argued that for leaving nigeria is not just about identity but today it has become about the survival progress and justice my fellow Biafrans, in the early hour of today, the 1st October 2024, the Biafra Defense Forces has destroyed, neutralized the proposed facility that was built to house and train Boko Haram in a place called Ehimembano in Imo State, former Imo State. Any more of such facility will be destroyed by Biafra forces. We call on Biafrans to give credible information on any further project of the Nigeria terrorist state targeted at bringing in Boko Haram for training in Biafra land or to be used to house fighters that the intention was to use against Biafra forces. Because the Nigeria terrorist army has been defeated. And all they do is to bring in fighters in whatever guise. Biafra land is not good for Chinese loan. The Biafra people were excluded during the time Nigeria state took loan from China. Our land and our people are not good to be part of the dividend of Chinese loan. Biafra land is not good for rail line, where every part of Nigeria, as they created it fraudulently today, has benefited from the rail line, except Biafra land. Biafra land is not good to have seaport irrespective of the fact that the Gulf of Guinea is connected to the Biafra land. Biafra land is not good for the headquarters of many multinational corporations that came to Nigeria or Niger area to do business only and solely for the natural resources that is found in Biafra land. None of these multinational corporations has their head office or headquarters in Biafra land to create job for the Biafra people, indigenous people. Biafra land is therefore not good for IDP camp or in any name that will accommodate any terrorists from northern Nigeria or from any part of the world. Biafra land is not a dumping ground for terrorists. For that reason, the Biafra Defense Forces have destroyed. The, pro the property and the facilities, and of course, anything that is connected to it will be destroyed in Biafra land. It is a message that we are sending out to the terrorist state to prove the capacity that Biafra government controls Biafra territory from exile, and of course, with the activities of the de facto government in the homeland. The responsiveness of the Biafra government has shown that the Biafra government take the security of lives and properties of our people, especially our women and children, very seriously. We have fought Nigeria terrorism for the past three years, secretly. And I wish one day the world will want to know what has happened in Biafra land from 2021 to this date. 
and we have been able to secure successfully the land of Biafra. It is only in Biafra land that our people are not living in IDP camp. Across Nigeria, every other region, people are living in IDP camp. Like they have come shambolically claiming that people from the north will be moved to Biafra land where Biafra forces and defense have been able to secure our land against the terrorism. We also have intel that the proposed movement of these people were actually to in order to bring in Boko Haram fighters to Biafra land to fight against Biafra forces. My fellow Biafran, in Yoruba land, the Yorubas are taking refuge in neighboring country, Benin Republic, for insecurity by the Nigeria terrorism or Nigeria terrorist state in the name of the Islamic expansionist Usman Danfodio legacy. Many Yorubas are today living in Bene Republic. They left the ancestral land as they are looking for a safe place to stay. The people that have chased them out of the ancestral land are Fulanese. They call them Fulani Hesmen. They have occupied Yoruba land, and today many of them have left their land and they are not secured in their own land. Biafra land will not be the same. Biafra will continue to respond to Nigeria terrorism plan and tactics very ruthlessly in defense of our land. While Nigeria terrorist state have openly supported Palestine independent and continue to financially support terrorism against Israel, the Biafra people will continue to stand with Israel and at the same time, we are not against those agitating for independence of South Palestine or for self-determination. But we are strongly against the terrorism against Israel and against the state of Israel. Nigeria always go to the United Nations General Assembly to advocate for the freedom and self-determination of Palestine. And these are people who have not fixed their own problem in Niger area. Today, we will do worse than what the Palestine have done if that is what will make the world to listen to us. Palestine have not lost 3 million children. We did. We lost 3 million children from 1967 to 1970. Palestine have not lost what Biafra lost. Palestine do not have what Biafra have. We power Nigeria's economy from our natural resources. What do we get in return? Marginalization killing, pogroms, and what have you. On this note, just for the late commerce who have not followed the event of Nigeria and Biafra for a very long time, I want the Biafra media to play the representation and advocating of the independence of Palestine by the former president of Nigeria in the name of Mohammed Buhari, because I have come across many people commenting on social media and they were outraged about the current vice president, who is, by the way, the founder of Boko Haram, advocating for independent state of Palestine. I would like the media team to play that as on that particular rock, I will build my church today. Media team, over to you, please. As we engage in these annual debates, we need to remind ourselves of the principles that led to the founding of the United Nations. Among those are feasible coexistence and self-determination of peoples. In this context, Mr. President, the unresolved question of self-determination for the Palestinian people and, of those, and, and those of Western Sahara, both nations, having been adjudged by the United Nations as qualifying for this inalienable right must now be assured and fulfilled without any further delay or obstacle.
<coughs> the international community has come to feel its hopes on the resolving Palestinian issue through the two has no more excuses or reasons to delay the implementation of the long list of Security Council resolutions on this question. Neither do we have the moral right to deny any people their freedom or condemn them indefinitely to occupation and blockade. <laughs> Mr. President, <coughs> delegates of member countries, United Nations 70 years old. It can Thank you very much. I would also like to have the latest video from the United Nations General Assembly of the current Vice President of Nigeria, who was the founder of Boko Haram. Thank you very much. Today, we are all witnesses to the heart-wrenching situation in Gaza and other Palestinian territories. We cannot discuss war and peace, complex and resolution, or humanitarian imperatives today without reflecting on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that has been raging since 7th August last year. Of course, the conflict predates this period and has been simmering for a better part of half a century. What it says us is that the international community has failed to live up to the spirit and aspirations of the United Nations, to reach the wall of inequality, violence and domination of one people by another. Justice is antithetical to revenge. Freedom is an inalienable right and a natural entitlement that cannot be denied to any people. The Palestinian people deserve their independence. They deserve to have a home of their own and territories already recognized by this very assembly and by international law, which has been routinely ignored. Nigeria continues to urge efforts to bring back on track the two-state solution that offers the prospect for a new beginning for the region. Nigeria reaffirms to supporting United Nations peacekeeping operations. We recognize the need for Africa to build strong and professional armies to meet the multiple challenges we face. Consequently, we reiterate the call for international support to operationalize the African standby post in addition to the provision of requisite support and resources to ensure the upgrade, take up, and effectiveness of a center of excellence on issues of counterterrorism in Africa. Mr. President, reform of the Security Council is critical if the UN is to strengthen its relevance and credibility in our rapidly changing world. Some permanent members of the United Nations Security Council have offered encouraging if tentative indications of support on the issue of reform. Thank you very much. My fellow Biafrans and listeners from across the world, with the clip you just listened to, the last one is the current vice president of Nigeria, who is the founder of Boko Haram. The first video you listened to was the former president of Nigeria, who also was one of the Islamic pillar, fundamentalism pillar in Nigeria and in Africa. Nigeria with this has demonstrated to be enemy of America and enemy of the West. Why the Biafra will continue to support the state of Israel? Have you seen that this is a black and white that can never mix together? Nigeria have advocated for the independent state of Palestine, which we are not against as a people looking for freedom. But what we are against is terrorism against the state of Israel. And the 7th of October attack, terrorism attack against Israel, Biafra people com continue to condemn that terrorist attack. 
Nigeria, having advocated in 2024 for the independent state of Palestine, should be bold enough to also accept the outcome of the Biafra self-referendum in peace or in pieces. I want you all to understand that Nigeria can never be trusted. America can never trust Nigeria. The West can never trust Nigeria. Nigeria remains an Islamic fundamentalist country that all the agenda is to support anything anti-West and anti-America. It does not matter how they pretend with you today, they will end up becoming your worst enemy. The earlier the world, the Western world and America accept the state of Biafra as only true allies in the West Africa, the better for them. Examples are many. I will use Iraq. I can also use Afghanistan. After 23 years, America pumped billions of dollars into Afghanistan. Today, Taliban are completely in charge of America weapons that America struggled for 23 years to stabilize that country. Nigeria will do worse than Afghanistan if Biafra is not supported. There are several compelling reasons why as many as 50 million Biafrans who voted in the ongoing Biafra self-referendum use their vote to advocate for independence of Biafra. The reasons are very numerous. And I will take it one at a time. From the historical injustices against Biafra people, the Nigeria genocidal war against Biafra from 1967 to 1970, also known as the Biafra War, was a brutal chapter in Nigeria history. The eastern region, known as Biafra, declared independence as the Republic of Biafra after enduring many years of systematic marginalization and violent pogroms in the northern Nigeria and other parts of Nigeria. The war resulted in an estimated one to three million dead children, primarily from starvation due to the blockade imposed by the Nigeria terrorist government. This tragic history has left deep scars in millions of Biafrans and, of course, in Biafra consciousness. Especially when the post war reconciliation was superficial and incomplete with the IRRR. The continuous reference of the Biafra war serves as a painful reminder that the Biafra people were once persecuted and betrayed by a country that was supposed to protect them. That betrayal has tripled today after over 50 years. We have seen the killings of Biafrans and destruction of their businesses across Nigeria. Not just in the northern Nigeria today, but also in the southwest Yoruba land. In Lagos, to be precise, we saw pogroms against their friends in Lagos after the 2023 election. And I will take it on the economic exploitation. As Nigeria celebrate their false, failed independence, the division of Nigeria into six geopolitical zones without the consent of the people was an injustice taken too far that have caught the wound of the war even deeper 
than as we thought. The eastern region, which is supposed to be called southeastern or southeast region, in accordance with the geography, today it is called the southeast instead of the southern region. They manipulated the geography, manipulated the demography in order to fight the freedom and suppress and subjugate Biafra people not to rise up. The region which would form the heart of modern Biafra is rich in natural resources, particularly oil. Despite this wealth, the artificial and the fake Southeast feel disappropriately excluded from the economic and political benefit of their own land. The so-called Niger Delta, which majority falls within the Biafra, the proposed Biafra borders of today, generate a significant portion of Nigeria wealth through crude oil. Yet, that region remains underdeveloped, suffering from poor infrastructure, environmental degradation, and poverty. Yet, they are faced with Nigeria terrorist army bombardment, like the recent killing in the Biafra Okoma community in Delta. The argument for Biafra is also an economic one. The resources of the Biafra people are being siphoned to enrich a far distant federal government in Abuja while the region remains underdeveloped. That is coming to an end with the declaration of the restoration of independence state of Biafra coming this year, 2024. My fellow Biafrans, we also suffered what I call the political marginalization within the Nigeria state. Since the end of the Biafra war, Biafra people have constantly been sidelined from the Nigeria political landscape, despite being one of the three largest ethnic groups. No Igbo speaking Biafra person has held the presidency since 1983. Key government positions, security appointment, and the military leadership role are disproportionately skewed in favor of the Northern Hausa Fulani and Western Yoruba elite. Many Igbo speaking Biafrans believe, and of course, it's a fact that this is a deliberate exclusion from power to prevent their voices from being heard in decision-making process. Why those who happen to be very close to power have sold their subconsciousness to self-aggrandizement, those who may have positive agenda that could shape the country future are not allowed but for complete freedom of Biafra people, where the aspiration of every Biafran will be achieved, where the potential will be attained, where Biafrans will compete among nations in innovation, where free education will be mandatory, where our hospitals will be equipped and the national insurance scheme will be completely functional. My fellow Biafrans, compelling reasons why Biafrans are leaving Nigeria are many. I'm just taking a few of them today. We have also cultural and ethnic disparities. Nigeria is an amalgamation of hundreds of ethnic groups with distinct cultures, languages, and world views. Biafrans, with their entrepreneurial spirit, 
democratic social structure and emphasis on individual merit often found themselves at odds with a more hierarchical feudal system, and I call it nomadic system of the North and the communal political structure of the Yoruba West. Many believe that the deep-seated differences between the ethnic groups in Nigeria makes it difficult to forge a cohesive national identity, which is fact, leading to continuous frictions and disharmony, and I call it dangerous diversity, which will never ever work in the modern age. Biafra, on the other hand, would allow the people to govern themselves according to their own culture and cultural value and system in a confederation and a confederating state of Biafra. have been on the rise across Nigeria. With the Biafra people often caught in the crossfire, in particular, they come 